Theresa May is reviled for her weakness. No British Prime Minister has found the strength to condemn an American president as she condemned Donald Trump since the Anglo-American alliance began in the Second World War. Anthony Eden maintained a public silence as Eisenhower destroyed his premiership and Britain's imperial pretensions when he stopped the Suez Adventure of 1956. Harold Wilson ignored Lyndon Johnson's pleas to send British troops to Vietnam. But he infuriated the radicals of the 1968 generation by diplomatically refusing to speak out against the war. Thatcher and Reagan, Major and Clinton had their private arguments about Granada and the IRA. Nothing they said matches the forcefulness of May's out, loud and proud denunciation of Trump for sharing the hateful narratives of British fascists. It has been comic to watch the shock with which politicians greeted Trump's endorsement of Britain first. They must have known he has spent his life in the grey zone between the right and the far right. If they didn't, we have a foreign office paid to set them straight. Only last week, Trump reminded us where his fanatic's mind lingers when he revived the bitter, broken fantasy that America's first black president was an illegitimate African interloper. There is no racist lie he will ever reject or disown. Britain's leaders will not see it. May's criticism was unprecedented but it remained a wholly inadequate response to an unprecedented U.S. president. Britain and America are still allies, the PM said, as she tried to repair a shattered relationship. Trump may be a buffoon but he is still Britain's best friend, the right-wing press told its readers. Theirs was the authentic voice of the politically left behind, who will never accept the world has changed until it blows up in their faces. Allies stand by their friends when they are in trouble. Trump turned on Sadiq Khan, London's Muslim mayor, when the capital was being attacked by Islamists, for reasons that are too transparent to waste time on. Intelligence sharing between GCHQ and the U.S. National Security Agency is the one clear benefit of the otherwise hazy, special relationship. When he needed a fresh lie to feed to his credulous supporters, Trump was happy to trash it by conjuring the fantasy from the pit of his dark imagination that GCHQ had helped the Obama administration tap his phone. Imagine that a U.S. president had retweeted and then defended the Islamist equivalent of Britain first and refused to apologize or retract. I think the reaction of the Tory party and press would not have been so mild. Yet the distinction between neo-fascism and Islamofascism is a distinction without a difference. Both share the fundamental conviction that Muslims and non-Muslims cannot live together. Both are violent, indeed, in the U.S., Right-wing extremists plotted or carried out nearly twice as many terrorist attacks as Islamist extremists. And the threat from both has moved online.